Hello, and welcome to Five for Friday for this first Friday in December, December 2nd. Lots of catching up since the last issue, uh, since we had a week off for the Thanksgiving holiday. So um, put on your listening caps. Do people still say that? And let's talk about what's been going on since then that might signal opportunities for small business owners. We'll start with topic number one, part three in the cryptocurrency saga that started the last two episodes were the last couple weeks, so you thought two parts were enough? Well, too bad for you. There's more. And I didn't even share any of the gory details about the house in the Bahamas and the strange romantic relationships. You can find more of that online if you want. Let's stick to a quick overview instead. As a reminder, we left off last time with FTX, the crypto exchange company, going under, and SBF, the guy, trying to fix everything. Since then, SBF has apologized and said he didn't ever try to commit fraud on anyone. And some of his financials came to light this week. More specifically, the financials he shared with investors, which it turned out were homespun Excel files that didn't make much sense. Meanwhile, another crypto lender, BlockFi, filed for Chapter 11, and now the Wall Street Journal is concluding that many of the tech industry leaders are, quote, not as smart as they thought they were. <laughs> ha, okay. There's a couple additional stories in the newsletter on crypto, including how the crypto cash crash is impacting Miami nightclubs, a ripple effect I had not considered. The key message for small business, don't jump on the crazy bandwagon just because other crazies are doing it, but don't give up on blockchain or the concepts around it just yet. It's not going away. Okay, so let's move on to story number two, robots. I love to find stories of cool ways that automation and robots can help us with tasks that are mundane or dangerous. This week, we have a robot designed to help nurses in the hospital by transporting drugs and lab samples, women designed too, and a test model of a lab kit using tiny ferrobots to increase the speed and volume of lab testing. And then there's a cute new home robot called Wink that helps you around the house without sharing all of your personal data with a giant tech company creative. And finally, officials in San Francisco have agreed to let the police use potentially lethal remote controlled robots, but only in emergency situations. So that won't be a problem at all, right? Are we in a movie? No, seriously, expect to see more and more automation. So think about where you can connect your business to this huge change in how we handle a variety of tasks. All right, moving on, let's talk uh, about outer space in the news this week, our story number three. I'm sure you heard that NASA launched the unmanned Artemis rocket to the moon. China also launched a rocket with three astronauts heading toward its newly completed space station. Is our new space race going to be between the US and China? TBD. But before we can travel to Mars and beyond, we need to figure out how to hibernate humans for the long trip. Researchers are examining the Arctic ground squirrel who is capable of hibernating for up to eight months to see if we can learn from them. My note on this topic, technology for space created tons of innovative new products and lots of opportunities for both large and small businesses back in the day, like the 70s and 80s. So consider, is there opportunity for you today in this world? Keep that in mind. All right, moving on to story number four, copyright law and technology. One arrest and one lawsuit related to copyright in this news cycle. The arrest was of Russians offering a pirated e-book site and the lawsuit was Jack Daniels against a dog chew toy called Bad Spaniels? How did that get to the US Supreme Court? In other copyright news, be careful to get permission when using memes like the successful baby at the beach one, as most of the phot photographers have copyright protection. And think about where does AI fit into all of this? Can a computer be found guilty of violating copyright law when it designs something too similar to an original work of art? And can AI protect its designs with copyright law? What happens when advertisers start to use your own image in their ads to personalize the ad to you? Who has the rights to this synthetic content? Lots to figure out here in this crazy new world. So stay tuned and be cautious, cautious with your meme usage. Now let's move on to our final story, story number five, the latest in EVs and transportation. General Motors not only expects that EV sales will equal gas-powered car sales by 2025, but they're also hoping to test a fully driverless shuttle with no steering wheel in San Francisco, home of the robot cops. Way to be forward-thinking, GM. I'm honestly impressed. 
Domino's is rolling out a new fleet of Chevy Bolts for its drivers, while truck and SUV manufacturer Rivian is having all kinds of trouble, partly due to the fact that it's run by an inexperienced tech bro, per the article I read. China is introducing a swappable battery model for their new EVs that's going to be sold in Europe. And driverless semi-trucks are coming to the U.S. for test runs as well, probably on the West Coast. Watch the road if you're in California. Finally, I'm still looking at our weekly recession, yes or no. Things are looking up. I saw five positive stories. Um, Jobs are being added, lots of spending on Black Friday and so forth, and just two negative ones. And for newsletter subscribers, check out three, yes, three bonus stories this week. One frivolous lawsuit, one sexist reporter, and a government full of lobbyists offering cigars, booze, and campaign contributions in order to expand sports betting rapidly across the whole country. Makes you proud to be an American. (laughs) All right. Happy Friday, and I will see you next week on Five for Friday. Thanks.